we in the book of Psalms, the 78, Psalm 78, yeah, and reading from verse 40 to 43. Praise be to God. Everything. All right. Psalms 78, verse 40 to 43. Everyone found it? Amen. Hallelujah. It says here, from verse 40, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. And how he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Hallelujah. God bless this word. The name of this message is the limitless king. The limitless king. Where we read in this psalm, here it is at the psalmist here, he was talking about the children of Israel. And he was talking about how God saved them. Deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. How he took them out from Egypt and how he was sent carrying them to the promised land. He also talked about how God fed them even through in the wilderness. How he brought even birds, the same quail, and fed them still. But yet, with all of that, they forgotten him. In all of that, they provoked him. Even to wrath, they have turned their back and tempted God, and, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Somebody say limited. After all what God did for, for them, they still limit God. They still, uh, still didn't believe that all what God did for them, they still couldn't believe that he could still do it in the past and even to the future. Hallelujah. And we come to understand that God is infinite. God is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all capable. There are no limits restricting God. Yet despite this to their own harm, his followers tend to limit the power of God by erroneous thinking. Well, we will look at some promises of God's word that will dispel the, that anti-biblical thinking and open you up to receiving the unlimited unmeasurable blessings of God again they vex the holy one of Israel hallelujah and the word limited used by the King James version is rendered differently in various translations however the verses surrounding verse 41 hallelujah certainly make a good case for the use of limited in this context, for Israel diminished their expectations of our unlimited God. In effect, they put their own limitations on God's intervention in their lives. By failing to remember his, his historically demonstrated power, his signs and wonders. And just like Israel of old, we too at times have limited God. Not necessarily deliberately but we still often diminish our expectations, people, of his endless power on our behalf. For we considered him as less than omnipotent. Or, hallelujah. We doubt his constant willingness to bless. We do not remember his power, his miraculous signs, and his wonders. For we forget that God said in Malachi 3.6, I am the Lord, I change not. For he is forever the same all-powerful God who delights 
in blessing his people. Hallelujah. I've restricted God. And I believe God has spoken to me today. And this was a message long. I had long time. I said, I want you to go and release it now. He said, my people have restricted me. They have put me in a box. And hallelujah. And that's why I cannot do what I have told them I'm going to do. is because they have restricted my hand uh, they have prevented me hallelujah from blessing them you have prevented me for fighting for you you have prevented me uh, hallelujah for stepping down hallelujah and working it out for you uh, because in your mind here it is you expect it to come this way and hallelujah you expect it to come that way hallelujah. in other words you want to tell we want to tell God how to do this and how to do that rather than saying God here am I God change me make me God do what you want Lord I don't know how you're going to do it but God I've given it to you I'm expecting a blessing from you God I don't know how you're going to do it I don't know if you're coming in the front or in the back or you're going to come up the roof but God I'm just waiting patiently and I'm just saying God you do what you said you're gonna do I'm not gonna tell you how to do it God because hallelujah that will get me in trouble that will prevent me from getting my healing it will prevent me from getting my breakthrough because I'm telling you how to be God I'm telling you how to be my father. I'm telling you how to bless me. But rather God, instead I'm your child. I'll just like a child, when they ask their parents, their father for something, that child waits patiently to hear yes or no it's the same way when we come to ask god hallelujah and if god say i'm coming this way hallelujah, i will say yes god you do it i'm saying yes god if you want to bless me that way so be it but i'm not gonna put no boundaries on you i'm not gonna put a limit on you i am your god i am your king and i am limitless i want you to know i'm the same god yesterday today and forever we have forgotten who our God is for you have forgotten the many times how God blessed you hallelujah when you couldn't when you shouldn't be here today we have forgotten how God stepped in hallelujah and work it out for you when you thought that was it when everybody thought hallelujah today is your last and you forgot how God stepped in hallelujah and fight your battles when everyone thought you would have been defeated God made you a winner you're sitting down here this evening and if you could just take it back to the past and remember how God did it for you uh, rather than limiting God today uh, to the situations that you face now uh, if God could do it for you in the past uh, I believe that God could do it for me in the present uh, and I know he could do it for me in the future God I'm not holding your hand God I'm not preventing you uh, because I thought that was it uh, but God I remembered hallelujah that you blessed me in the past uh, and I know hallelujah that in this present situation I'm facing in this sickness that I'm going through I know God you're well able to do it for me because again you said you are the same God yesterday today and forever somebody give God the praise hallelujah he said I'm the limitless God four things I will show four things at you that we put God how we limit God. Number one, healing. Oh my God. For Jesus healed all who came to him in faith. The apostle Peter healed individuals and the multitudes. The apostle Paul had a remarkable record of ministering divine healing. Philip had great healings in Samaria. And God through a disciple named Ananias healed Paul, Paul's blindness. And not just Jesus, but believers consistently heal the sick. For do not restrict God to healing only through apostles. In fact, it is the honor and privilege of all believers to lay hands on the sick and to see the sick recover in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Hallelujah. In Exodus 23, 25 to 26, it said, Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. For the worshiper of God, 
He is the Lord who will take sickness from among you. This taking away of sickness is one of God's blessings for the worshiper of God. How many of you all are worshipers of God? Hallelujah. I'm talking about those who worship God in spirit and in truth. For God said, I am spirit and they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And you know you're a worshiper of God. I want you to know, hallelujah, that God's blessing, hallelujah, he take away the sickness of the one of God's, it's one of God's blessings for the worshiper of God. So I know healing belongs to me. When I come into the house to worship my God, I'm expecting in God, hallelujah, my great physician to come and heal me. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what a doctor say. It doesn't matter what my best friend or my good friend may tell me. Hallelujah. Right now they might be writing a eulogy for me, expecting me to die. But God did not take the stripes. Hallelujah. For just like that, he took it for me. And I could go, hallelujah, to the very throne room of God and say, God, I remember you said that by your stripes, I am healed. But the Bible said by his stripes we were healed. And I always say that he took the stripes before you got sick. He knew you when I get sick today. He looked into your future and know he said, daughter, I know she's going to get cancer. But I, I, I had to get her to remember who I am. And I'm expecting you to win. I'm expecting you to believe in my word and don't limit me from healing your body. Don't limit me hallelujah from getting that infirmity out of you. I promised you perfect health and if you believe in God's word you will hold on to it because God's word never changes and I say God you promised me my healing. I'm waiting for it because I refuse to die. I got important things to do in this season for you God that's why I could declare in the word hallelujah I shall not die but I shall live to declare the works of the Lord devil you may throw whatever sickness may come my way but I'm holding on to God's word and I'm speaking to my body body be made whole in the name of Jesus I know that healings just don't go through their preachers and it just don't go through to the pastors and the apostles I don't need to look for a Pastor, say, Pastor, lay your hands on me. Once I'm a child of God, the same power that goes through the bishop, the same power that goes through the minister, it flows through me. Hallelujah. Time is ticking. I've been calling you, Pastor, but you're not picking up your phone. I know you're busy, but the same way you talk to God, I can talk to God too. I can get up from my bed, sick as I am already sick already but god hallelujah touch me god my back may be hurting me but god i'm not putting no boundaries anymore touch my back touch my body touch my sick heart touch my sick lungs god i refuse to walk in fear i stand in upon your word and i say god do it Somebody say the limitless king. The limitless king. Hallelujah. Uh, it is also one of God's benefits for his children. In Psalms 103 uh, verses 2 and 3. It says praise the Lord O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heal all your disease. That's my benefit from serving God. Hallelujah. I am not no mediocre Christian. Just coming to church Sunday after Sunday. Saturday after Saturday. Wednesday after Wednesday. Hearing good word and refuse to eat it. And always coming looking depressed. When I come into the house of the Lord I may be being defeated in some battles but when I leave this place I must leave this place being revived and restored I must leave this place being strengthened because my God I want to walk a life hallelujah of being a winner a life hallelujah of being a victor 
victorious man on God of God come on somebody that is how you must think as a child of God hallelujah do not take anything that the enemy throws at you do not receive it throw that away and hold on to the word of God God this is what I'm holding on this is what I'm holding on to hallelujah let all your diseases it means exactly that don't limit God in his desire to heal you right now oh my God that's why you can't get healed you're limiting God hallelujah we sing the song be magnified we sing the verse oh I made you too small in my eyes oh Lord forgive me I believe in a lie that you were unable to help me but now oh Lord I see my wrong I'll heal my heart and show yourself strong come on now and in my eyes and with my soul oh Lord be magnified and we sing it but do we re do we really mean what we sing you know ways to magnify Oh my God, we just, you see, God made this life so easy for us. When we hear the word magnify, we think this is big, big thing. You ever have a magnifying glass? And you say that we watch an ant on the wall. And you put that magnifying glass on that ant. It looks enormous. It looks huge. And simply is that. God, I need you to magnify me. Make me big. Make me huge over whatever situation you face. Because lately we have been watching uh, the sickness and see it as something bigger than God. But God, so why are you not magnify me? Make me bigger. Hallelujah. God would not be able to be big over your sickness. If you don't let him come on now we when we don't let him we limit him and God said I am willing I'm willing to come to heal you I'm willing to change and give you perfect health but you're putting boundaries between me and you <laughs> oh my god and why like with God God just don't do things like that unless you allow him to Again, it's our choice what we want. You see, God didn't force Adam. He didn't force Eve. I said, listen, you see this tree? I, I prevent you from eating of this tree. He gave him a choice. Free will. He said, listen, you could eat of anything. Even the tree of life you could have eaten. But you see, that tree of good and evil, do not eat from it. And they made a decision. They went and they eat. And God forces no one to serve him. He forces no one. If you don't want to be walking in your healing, that's your business. You stay in your sickness. Hallelujah. It's okay. But in Exodus 15 and verse 26, it said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring unto you any of diseases. I brought on the Egyptians for I'm the Lord who heals you again a condition if we continue to walk right 26 26 hallelujah a condition if you walk right he told he told the, the Israelites that if you walk right if you keep right if you keep my decrees if you keep my commandments hallelujah no disease will not come near you it will not come near you for the God, hallelujah, the godly believer, for the godly believer, God is not the afflictor with the disease, but the healer from diseases. Turn to the person next to you, tell them. He said, tell them, God is not the afflictor with disease, but the healer from diseases. It's like a sick lady once said to someone, she said, maybe God is not willing to heal me quickly, but, but rather he is teaching me through this and is blessing others by my example. No, 
You see, otherwise, why then in her erroneous way of thinking would she frustrate God's supposed plan by seeking medical help if God was trying to teach her a lesson through the sickness? Hers was unsounding thinking. In contrast to that sick lady's faulty conclusion, Jesus said to the leper, I am willing. Mark 1, verse 41. Don't limit the Lord in the realm of healing people. He is willing to heal you even this evening. All those who are all wrapped up in having God, have putting boundaries before God, that you won't be able to get your healing. God said, that's why you can't get healed, because you have that boundary. It's time to move it away. Let me heal you. Let me be the limitless God in your life. The second one. We limit God from the miraculous. So do you think of miracles as only for the Bible days? Or do you believe that miracles are, from you, are for you today? Remember, I am the Lord. I change not. Again, Malachi 3.6. Remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 38. And still, hallelujah, does miracles in the 21st century. He still does it today. Neither God the Father nor Jesus Christ, his son, has changed. They work miracles amongst the people in times of old. They continue to work miracles in modern times. Don't limit God's miraculous acts only to days gone by. Oh my God. That's what we do. We come to church. We read, the, we, we, we hear the minister. We hear the ministers preach the word and we say stories, fairy tales, and we get a little hyped up. But many of us don't believe that God could do it for them today. Come on now. We don't believe that God could do it today. Hallelujah. That's why, hallelujah, we get frustrated. That's why, hallelujah, everything we hear in the news, everything that, that happens to us, hallelujah, we walk in defeat. Hallelujah, we can't believe in God. Hallelujah, we don't take the word. We don't place it in our hearts and say, God, the same way you do it with David, you could do it for me. God, hallelujah, he killed the Goliath, the Goliaths in my life, God. Hallelujah, I know I can destroy him with you yeah. hallelujah. hallelujah also do not limit the extent of what God can do his power is not finite but unfettered and all in him compassing father oh God I know with a shadow of a doubt God you can bless me with a good man yeah. hallelujah I may not have all the looks but God, hallelujah, every hallelujah person has their own fish. Hallelujah. I may not have all the money in my pocket, God, but I know one day or as long as I hold on to you, let that miracle come. Mommy have always told me, daddy has always told me, you'll never find a good woman. You'll never find a good man because you're not looking good. But I know my God, hallelujah, do a miracle for me. I'll make thee going down in age. But God, hallelujah, going down in age, I'll become like fine wine. And Father, oh my God, when they step in my life all those who were talking have to keep their mouth shut because I'm gonna say it wasn't the work of a man but it was the work of the Holy Ghost that that man that woman saw me as a beautiful princess as a kingly man somebody give God the praise in this house I mean I have all the money to get a mansion God but God I'm not depending on HDC but I'm to get me any house I depending on you my God to bring forward that mansion for me because once HDC deterred turn me down I will get depressed so God I'm not putting no limits on you God bless me anyhow Lord talk to that rich man at the corner who 
owns that house on 5th street uh, let him see God in me uh, and God you speak to that man uh, to come and say son daughter this house is for you I don't know who you are but God told me just to give you it take it take it take it take it father I'm not putting no limits on you somebody give God the praise Oh my God, uh, it just remind me of, of the story with a woman, the widow woman and Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, hallelujah verse 1. You see, don't limit God's ability to provide a supernatural, a supernatural thing for you. Through the prophet of Elijah, God was going to provide a miraculous supply of valuable oil for the destitute widow somebody hallelujah he told her to borrow empty jars and don't ask for just a few for elijah understood god's unlimited power and his limitless care for his people for god miraculously filled every single jar brimful and delivered the widow from her poverty do you need a miracle in your life today people Hallelujah. Do you need a miracle in your life today? You're sounding so weak this evening. I need a miracle. Hallelujah. I'm removing my boundaries. I'm taking the limits off, my God. But don't ask for just a little of God's help. Don't limit the extent to which Almighty God can help you. His ability to meet your need is without limitation. I'm just doing like Elijah when he told that destitute widow. Don't just look for a few jars. Hallelujah but look for plenty Father I'm coming to your throne and I'm not asking you for a little I'm asking you for much Father I need it I need it I need it I don't know where it's coming I don't know how it's gonna come but God I know it's coming if the Lord says come then you do like Peter hallelujah he can walk on the water God say I wait to come if you encounter a demon possessed person you can cast the demon out in the name of Jesus without waiting to call the church's elders why it's God's miraculous power through you don't limit God and what he can do for you and through you hallelujah so we know about we limit God from our healing we limit God over the miraculous in our lives we limit God's provision for us that's number three remember Jesus miraculously multiplying the loaves and fish and feeding the thousands as a result again he's the same yesterday and today remember Abraham and Isaac in Genesis chapter 22 on the Mount of Moriah Jehovah Jireh, we sing it, Jehovah Jireh, my provider is grace, is sufficient. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, Genesis 22, verse 14, and God miraculously provided a ram for the sacrifice. Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply some of my needs. Oh, my God shall supply a little of my needs. Uh, my God shall supply none of my needs. Oh my God. My God shall supply all. All of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In context to the given believer. Hallelujah. God will supply all your needs. In context to the given believer. We talk about giving. I know I have a, a message to give about giving. The next time I get an opportunity to preach about that, I'm coming to preach it. I get a release. But I know it's truly in something about giving. Giving is not just about money. I learned that. Because there were times I wasn't working, I had no money in my pocket to give. Come on. That's why I have, I have a problem, and I still have the problems. Please forgive me. When I go to services, and I hear the $100 line and the $1,000 line, and poor me, I want to be a part of it, but I cannot be a part of it because I have nothing in my pocket to give. But you know what God told me? He said, listen, it's not about the money because I really don't need your money. Because I don't need your money. There is no bank in heaven. 
where you could go up in heaven and push a card? How many of you all have an ATM card in heaven? Tell me. I have none. If you have something, here I will tell you, sister, you say you have a card in heaven, there's a place in St. Anne's <laughs> where they're taking people, people like you, who are on a next level. Because I don't have a card, but God deals with how you give. And how you give is not just money, but when God asks you to give with your service. When, listen, when the ministers will say, we need people to act, to come in the drama. We need people to be ushers. It's not the pastor want ushers, you know. If you know, hallelujah, there's a way that you could serve God by giving him back. God, I'm giving my life as an usher to you. <laughs> that's when God said I will supply all the needs because you may not have money I didn't have no money in my pocket years ago. but I learned God I'm giving my service to you come on now somebody eyes open up now it's not just coming to church and just sitting down and have poor bishop and myself walking hand and we sweating we want ushers we need two ushers there. you Giving your service unto God and God looks at that. Amen. And how do you serve? When God said, when you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. It's not how much money I put in the basket. A big check come in, you know. I could have a million dollars right out. And I come and I put it in the basket with a vexed face. You feel I get anything from that? But my little five dollars in my pocket, I come and say, Father, this is all I have, but God bless you and you God, I expect it a miracle. And then somebody now come and give me that same check of a million dollars. Don't get vexed, you know. How you give. So I'm ushering at the door. Hallelujah. I'm giving my service unto God. I'm ushering with a smile. Because I want to do it because I love God. Not by the door and everybody come, your face sour. Oh my God, I don't know why I'm in this phone. Huh? You know why you're in it. I just throw that out. There's so much. Oh my God. Let me get back to the, to, to the sermon. Let me get back to the sermon. But, but my God shall supply all your, not needs, eh? Need. All your need, not needs. You see, you see that we get tied up with? The needs. You see, this need, he will supply all your need. What you need now, he will supply it. I will supply your need now for this present time. Because we're focusing on one thing right now. Because if I give you everything, you go forget me. <laughs> if I give you everything, you will forget me. So that's why we have to continue believing and trusting and serving God. So God, I'm trusting you, God, that God, my bills are going to be paid Montaigne. All right, I will supply your need for this. But while I bless you with that, you have to continue believing and giving with a cheerful heart so that in the next time I will supply your other need and your other need. Come on now. Is there a relationship? Yeah. Man, man and woman, man and woman. Grace of God. Sorry, elder boy. In a relationship. If you if you giving me your all and I'm giving you all, I ain't no relationship. You get every, you get everything. You get everything. So why I need to love you for now? <laughs> but the thing is, I'm not loving you because it could give me stuff, you know. I love you because I want to be with you. You understand? So I know you supply my needs. So I said, let me hold back. God said, I know you love me, but let me hold back. Let me see how you truly love me. I know you love me, but let me hold back a little. Let me hold back a little. Uh, just like Abraham telling Isaac, the Lord will provide. You could have your seed. The Lord will provide. Hallelujah. He went to see if Abraham will truly sacrifice Isaac. Well, I shall I doubt. Abraham raised up. 
that knife to slit his son's throat. The angel of the Lord stopped him. God realized, no, 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 no. You see this? Now I could supply my need for you. I sent a ram. I didn't send a herd, you know. I sent a ram for that need. Come on now. Hallelujah. You understand what I say? Hallelujah. Is that heresy? Is that heresy? Oh my God, Father. Hallelujah. You see, let your all be your all. Don't underestimate God's ability and his willingness to provide for you. His bounty is unlimited. See, unlimited. And the fourth one, God's protection. Oh my God. God's protection. So we limit God from receiving our healing. And we limit God from for his miraculous works in our life. We limit God for providing for us. And then we limit God with God's protection. The Bible abounds with examples of God's sovereign supernatural protection and deliverance of his people. Like the three Hebrew men in the fiery furnace, Daniel in the lion's den, Peter freed from jail by an angel. The angel of the Lord encamping around and delivering those who fear God. Like in Psalms 91, thousands falling all around you, but it will not come near you, the believer in God. Don't un underestimate God's limitless ability to protect you and your family hallelujah it reminds me of Matthew chapter 9 verses 20 to 30 Jesus said do you believe that I'm able to do this hallelujah. yes Lord the blind man replied then he touched their eyes and said according to your faith Will it be done to you? I have delivered you. Hallelujah. Don't put boundaries on God and what he can do in your life. Don't put boundaries towards your healing and your miracles. Don't put boundaries towards your provision, your protection. According to your faith, these things and more will be done to you. Believe God. Don't limit the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Some of you may be wondering how you're getting home tonight hallelujah oh my god you heard i remember a long time about the red cap man oh my god uh, some of you may be too small to know about the red cap man oh my god i remember those people afraid how at a certain time they want to get in their house because of the red cap man <laughs> but you know in the house of the lord wherever god says, i will protect you it doesn't matter what, hallelujah, wizard or witch decide, hallelujah, to call your name out in the night. God said, I will protect you. I will deliver you. I will help you. Hallelujah. When they're calling out, hallelujah, and try to curse you, I will allow them to bless you instead. Hallelujah. When they try, hallelujah, to curse your family, to curse your marriage, I will, hallelujah, tremble their lips to say, blessed be, hallelujah to that man to that woman because God had promised I will keep you I will protect you I will deliver you fear not do not limit me and in this situation though I will hallelujah though may I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for God is with me his rod and his staff they comfort me he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Why must I be afraid? Though they may rise up against me, God, hallelujah, will lift up a standard against the enemy while he moves me like a flood. I have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and I carry some royal angels in camp and run about me. I can sleep in peace. Woman, shake up your Self. Take a good bath tonight and go hallelujah on your bed. Hug up your pillow if you ain't married. But if you're married, you're good to hug up your man and say, Babes, tonight I'm gonna sleep in peace tonight. No devil is gonna wake me up in the night. Let them take up a storm. My God promised me sweet sleep, and I'm gonna sleep like I sleep.
like never before. Somebody give God the praise in the house. Turn to somebody as a brother sleep. Sister, you better sleep tonight. The limitless king is on your side. Get up and understand that God wants to do it for you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, God said, I am not man. He said, I cannot lie to you, my daughter. I cannot lie to you, my son. I know the plans for your life. Yeah, my designs. I'm asking you to dream again. I'm asking you to believe again. Why don't you hope again? Why don't you trust me again? And take the limits off me. Remove every barrier. Remove the chain. Remove the walls. And let me be the limitless God. Let me be the limitless king in your life. Somebody stand up and begin to worship God in the house. Woo! Huh. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of walking. Hallelujah. Defeated. God said, Take the limits. Take the limits off you. Hallelujah. This is my time. This is my season. This is my time to reap. This is my harvest. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. You've been so in many tears over the months, over the years. Ask for the rain, say rain. This is my time. Let fall, let it fall. Let it fall on me, let it fall. Let the rain fall. I'm fed up walking in the wilderness. Oh my God, a storm is coming. The storm is coming. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. It is coming. 